Welcome back. You're watching Citizen Business. And now, Kenya's rise to middle income status can be largely credited to the continued rise of its real estate sector, which is now among the biggest contributors to the country's wealth. But mixed reviews are beginning to emerge over the state of Kenya's real estate sector for a reality check on Kenya's re uh, realty scene. I'm joined by two notable players in Kenya's uh, property market. That's uh, Sakina Hassan Ali, Head of Research and Marketing at Has Consult. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, major retired David Carrao of King's Pride Properties thank you so much for joining us as I've just said on my intro there Kenyans are you know there's a little confusion over whether there's a real boom in Kenya's property sector let's start with you Sakina well if you look at um, uh, the pricing trends from 2008 uh, onward to 2010 you would see there was definitely a big increase in property pricing which is very um, representative, representative of a boom. In 2011, when we saw mortgage rates increase, uh, we saw that flatten a bit, but there's never been any falls in, property, um, in the property cycle in Kenya, which is great for this market. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts, uh, Karel? Uh, <coughs> it's true. Uh, real estate in Kenya has been uh, growing and uh, it's, uh, it's a very exciting uh, sector in the sense that uh, uh, as, uh, as the economy grows, you are able to see so many Kenyans uh, getting that chance of uh, owning homes. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would say is that uh, uh, what is uh, affecting the real estate sector is, uh, is the f affordability of uh, the, the loan facilities that are offered. But um, as, uh, what happens is most of the times, uh, like when the, 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 the interest rates go up, um, we see the rich are the ones who are dominating the market. Okay, okay. And, and of course we'll come back to all those details in just a moment. I'm just wondering, demand and supply, are they matching across the board, Sakina? Well, it depends what market you look at. So if you look at the amount of supply that, um, that the, the, the government wants, it's about 200,000 units a year. Currently we're producing about 15 to 16,000 units. Um, but this is mostly in the high end of the market. So what you're seeing is that the high end of the market is seeing somewhat of a match uh, of supply and demand. But the middle uh, sector of the market and the low end of the market is seeing a massive gap. Mm -hmm. So the amount that's supplied in that market is not enough. So in that case, uh, demand far outstrips supply. All right, and the big question around Nairobi is, you know, all these new developments coming up, uh, commercial properties, um, homes as well. Who's buying these houses? Um, the houses are, be, are being bought by Kenyans. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, you realize the mortgage, uh, you know, the in the whole of the country, uh, we don't we we have about uh, twenty thousand uh, mortgages with all the banks, and uh, that is not uh, what you would expect of of a, of a country that is as vibrant as Kenya, and uh, you realize um, if you look at uh, the number of Kenyans who are paying uh, fifty thousand and above for rent, there are so many. Mm -hmm. So if the environment was conducive, uh, the, 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 the market would be even much, much more different. But the houses are being bought by yeah. Kenyans. And, and my question is, you know, 22,000 mortgages, that's the number we uh, are beginning to hear in, in recent months. Um, but I was also reading a report by the Kenya Bankers Association where they say 7 out of 10 uh, Kenyans prefer to build and are actually building their homes and the rest of the 3% is either uh, mortgaging or inheriting the houses. So who's buying all these houses in Nairobi? Well, our statistics show that about 75% of people who actually buy property in Kenya um, are investors. So only a small segment of people are actually uh, buying their own properties uh, from the market, which is why it makes sense that 7 to 10 out of, of the people who are looking at, uh, at home ownership are actually um, building their own homes because there are a lot of bottlenecks in the real estate market for people who want to own homes. Uh, one of the biggest one, as as he mentioned, is uh, the interest rates. Um, so I uh, I totally think that that statistic stands out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've get, we're getting a lot of questions on our social media um, platforms where we ask the question, would should you buy or should you build? And we're getting a lot of people saying, I'd rather build. What is what would your advice be? 
Um, it all depends on uh, the the kind of uh, 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 you know you are, you are, you are the, the the personality that you have because uh, some people uh, would rather would, they don't they wouldn't mind they even have the time to 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 go and supervise the building. But uh, if you look, uh, like for us, sometimes we even uh, uh, we, we organize expos and go to the uh, to the diaspora market, and such people, some have not been in Kenya even for a very long time. So such are the people that such for such people, there is no proper environment for them to build for themselves. However, also. There are so many other reasons that you look at uh, for why you would opt to 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 buy uh, to buy a house uh, rather than build. For example, gated community. You are all enjoying one swimming pool, all of you. If you build your own house, you all those costs will come with you. So uh, it depends. The, those who can afford, they will buy the plot. They they can afford the money and the time will do it but uh, there are other advantages when mm -hmm. you are buying uh, from a developer there are so many things that uh, uh, a developer every year the de uh, developers are trying to get uh, ways and means of uh, bettering mm -hmm. bettering the, the kind of homes that you're building of course there's and you're a developer so I must say you you're a little biased in this discussion um, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering some people say that you know buy a house you do not have to live in it get somebody to pay the rent and that will pay off your mortgage but in some parts of Nairobi you get a place where what you're paying for uh, you know your monthly mortgage payment is actually a lot more than the rent that can be fetched in that particular house what would you advise them um, well actually that is a, that is a very true statistic if you actually look at the data you will see that a mortgage if you were to buy the house that you're currently renting your mortgage repayment would be two to three times more than your rent so there's a big disconnect there um, what I would say to people who want to get into the real estate market is to start small perhaps buy a house that you won't live in and rent it out to someone else something that is within your um, within your salary range and then because property does appreciate over many years um, you can over sorry over a short uh, number of years you can sell it and um, and buy the next level up of property and that way you escalate your your capital base mm -hmm. how would you advise somebody who's looking for to buy a home where do they start what do they who do they look for what do they look for my biggest uh, <coughs> advice would be and uh, that comes back to the question you had asked earlier uh, to these to somebody who wants to uh, buy a house uh, you start early you, you buy off plan like uh, for example we have uh, uh, development that uh, you can start paying we have what we call a zero percent deposit you can start paying as low as 70,000 a month as we build by the time the property if the project is finished one it has appreciated in value as she says you can sell it and take your premium mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, aspect is uh, you have very little left uh, to pay mm -hmm. because you've been paying as the house is being constructed mm -hmm. another big advantage is that now you can put in a tenant so it is uh, that would be my advice that uh, so long as you can afford uh, to spare some money look for a house off plan like now we have a, we have some projects in the same region uh, we have some projects in Kiambu Road one is going for 12.5 uh, m and another one in the same region is going for 6 m and the only reason is the level of completion one we have we are completing in March the okay. other one we've not started mm. all right and of course when you say it's uh, 70,000 shillings per month you're locking out the majority you know of Kenyans who might not be able to have an extra 70,000 that's over the rent they're already paying or um, you know the, the daily livelihoods what is what's your advice to those who might not be able to afford that amount of money well it depends on what you're uh, what you're looking to do if you're looking to own a home um, I would say initially what I said we, wa was you start off with so smaller property, sell it, buy more, sell it and you get to own your home. If you want to dabble in the real estate market and you really want some of those returns, I think REITs are a good way to go. Um, you, 
for a minimum financial outlay, uh, you get access to real estate returns of mm -hmm. f between 14 to 18 percent. Allow me to cut you off there because you've mentioned REIT and uh, we are also getting a lot of questions by Kenyans asking what is this you know, real, uh, real estate investment trust all about. Maybe as we wind up you can just give us um, a brief um, outlook over what it is about and what Kenyans uh, can look out for it if they have enough money to invest in them. Right, so basically what a REIT is and the different types of REITs, so there's an income REIT and a, and a development REIT. I think the one currently on the market by Stanlib is an income REIT. So they have, uh, they uh, put out a, 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 an IPO for funds and they go on to buy a commercial property which gives you a certain return in rental return and also capital appreciation of the years. They then give out those dividends over the years and I think their standard is promising about 14 percent um, returns. Uh, what you then can do is buy one unit, I think their unit is about 20,000 shillings, um, which is quite little. I mean, if you, if you were to look at the two bottlenecks in the REIT market, uh, one of them is the uh, one of the, bot sorry, the bottlenecks in the property market, one of them is the amount uh, of, uh, uh, of outlay you need to put out. You need to have five, six million shillings to buy a property. The other problem is buying a property and selling it is such a long-term sort of um, sort of thing to do. Uh, REITs take care of both these things. So the first thing they do is they allow you to invest in the real estate market with a very small amount um, or rather minimal amount and the second thing that is it's very liquid so you can buy and sell very easily. All right. So if you're looking to double in the real estate market and get some of those returns, I think a REIT is a great way to go. Alright, thank you so much um, for your thoughts and for enlightening us on what to do when we are ready to build or to buy. Uh, Sakina Hassanali, uh, Head of Research and Marketing as Hass Consult and Major General Retired David Carral of King's Pride Properties. Thank you so much for joining us on the Business Center tonight. All right, and um, Citizen Business will take a short break. We'll be back right after this break. Remember, Smart Farm is on the way.